And we are live. What up, players? Welcome to episode 148 of Player Life. It is Wednesday, the 28th of July, here in Tokyo, Japan. Um, another uh, hot summer's day here in Tokyo. And uh, yeah, good day. Good day overall. Um, yeah, nice chill day. Went to the went to the park, did a workout. You know, did some game, living a player lifestyle. It's all good. Um, so, so yeah, uh, let me just share the screen here. Uh, putting in, uh, putting in the work as usual. Ten chin ups, up fast, down slow. It's the way you got to do them. Fully extended. Uh, most people, when they do chin-ups, they don't they don't fall down. It's important to go f almost. You know, I'd say like ninety-seven percent. Um, maybe so they maybe not so much so that your arms lock, but almost like almost lock, and um, and then do the uh, abs after. Um. But yeah, today I was uh, I was feeling it was seriously hot today. How how hot was it today? It was um, I was already two degrees humid, so it made it a lot hard harder. And then pull ups. Um, I was really fatigued today. I had to uh, I had to really push to knock out knock out the ten. But uh, yeah, I got it done. Um. <clears throat> These days I'm mixing mixing it mixing it up between uh, pull ups and chin ups, and uh, you know a bunch of bunch of other exercises that we don't usually record. But um, yeah, I was struggling on the last one, but uh, got it done. That's the most important thing. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, that was uh, that was pretty much. Uh, you know, caught up with uh, caught up with some friends. Uh, well, with a friend, um, and uh, yeah, we uh, talked about uh, you know talked about investments, talked about chicks, talked about working out. It was a good time. Uh, it was a good time indeed. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, what I do. It was funny last night. Last night I hooked up with this uh, Thai chick. That I met out on Saturday night, you know, I got her number and <laughs> I, went, I went over to her place. Usually, like rare enough, actually, that very rare that I go to a chick's place. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so uh, I went over. It was I. I was gonna stay actually, because it was late, and I was like, yeah, I'll just I'll stay in her place. So it was around. You know, because it was it was late when I left my place, it was like 10 p.m. So by the time I get there and do the date and all that, I'll, I'll have missed the last train. So I planned on staying, right? And she said it was cool. So uh, usually I don't like to do that. I like to go to you know, but she wasn't. She didn't want to come here. So I wanted I wanted to smash as uh, Gabrielle says another notch. I wanted to get another notch. So I went to her place. She was down. And uh, yeah, so I got I got there, and uh, she was wearing this sexy little red, uh, you know, night thing. <laughs> uh, you know, it was hot anyway. Um, like a see-through little short nightgown kind of thing. Anyway, it was sexy. I, and her place was um, her place was it looked clean, I guess. Um, it was clean, normal Japanese kind of apartment. And uh, yeah, so she starts, um, you know, she offered to give me a massage first. So I was like, cool. I don't usually, I don't usually like getting massages for some reason. I, I just, I just rather smash, you know. <laughs> I I like to get, I actually prefer to give massages because I like to be the one, I like to be the dominant one. I like to be in control. But anyway, I said, whatever. I kind of, kind of needed a massage anyway. So I said, all right, I'll let you give me a massage, a Thai massage. So um, 
Yeah, she, she's. I lay lay down on on her bed, and she gets on top of me and starts massaging my back with with oil and whatnot. And just like on the wall in front of me, I see this fucking like cockroach, like a fucking cockroach, um, on just like about a foot away from my face, and I'm like, Jesus Christ! And I just. You know, luckily there was a box of tissues beside. I grabbed the tissue and like s snatched it and crushed it. But um, I was like, "Holy shit!" There's like, there's fucking cockroaches. There's a cockroach in your house, like you know. I've you know, there's cockroaches in Japan, but I've never had a fucking cockroach in in my apartment. They're nasty, nasty things. Um. And then she was like, "Yeah, there's yeah. Recently, there's there's a lot." And I was, "What do you mean there's a lot? There's a lot. There's a lot of cockroaches." And uh, it was kind of surprising because the place was, like I said, looked clean when I first went in there. It didn't stink or it wasn't like, you know, it was neat, neat and tidy. But then, yeah, I, I just uh, yeah, I started like I was kind of freaked out. I just don't like cockroaches. I think rats and cockroaches are the only two things. Rats and cockroaches, I fucking hate. I'm sure there's more, but they're, they're two things I really fucking despise. I don't really care about spider. I don't give a fuck about spiders. I don't give a fuck about snakes. Um, I don't know. I just they don't freak me out. If I see a big spider, it doesn't doesn't bother me. But a cockroach, they're fucking nasty, right? Um, just because they're fast and shit, and they're like oily and dirty. I don't know. Um, so yeah, it was like kind of put me off. Um. But uh, yeah, I, I just uh, you know I, I was like, what do you mean? There's a lot, and she was like, yeah, there's a lot, or, or recently there's been a lot, and I was like, yeah, well, you should call your landlord, or you should move out, or. But um, yeah, I continued. I I continued on. Let her give me the massage, um, and uh, yeah. So then I I had enough, and I was I was just like, I just came to a point where I just wanted to smash. So I, I, I like. I flipped her, I, I just turned over and flipped her down and, you know, got down to business. Um, yeah, it was a good, it was a good smash, but, um, you know, I was still, uh, you know, we smashed um, uh, for about maybe 20 minutes. It wasn't, a, wasn't the best sex I've ever had, but it was, it was pretty hot. It was, it was all right. Um, you know, uh, so we're chatting and, uh, you know, I just, I go, I go to the toilet. To, you know, I was gonna rinse off, kind of sweaty, sweaty sex with a girl I don't really know. So, like, I just like, you know, usually, what I do is obviously with you know a chick like that with a, I obviously I wrapped up, used the condom, but just to be extra cautious, I just uh, usually I rinse off just in the shower. But I went into the shower room. And there was another fuck it. There was two fucking cockroaches just in the in the fucking um in the bathtub. I was like, what the fuck is this? Is just nasty. Um yeah, so uh just quickly cleaned myself. And at that point I was like, fuck this, I'm not staying, I'm not staying in this house. Um and uh yeah, I, I showered off and and I went uh, went to take a piss, and there was more, there was another cockroach in the bathroom and i was like jesus christ i'm i'm out of here uh i was in and out of that house within <laughs> i'd say i was i wasn't even there an hour <laughs> and i i'd actually planned to stay there but i'm not staying in a house that's infested with with cockroaches i actually felt kind of bad for her she was kind of a sweet girl um she was a sweet thai girl <laughs> fucking <laughs> uh place infested with cockroaches i don't know why the fuck she uh invited me to her place if there's like there's an infestation of cockroaches um damn i could never live like that i would not i would not allow it i would like blast those motherfuckers i would like i don't know i get a, a spray can you know aerosol can and with a with a lighter and just torch the motherfuckers um yeah, but uh, let me check the chat. Rishi in the house, what's up? I'm good, bro. Hope you're well. Um, uh, uh, Rishi Padarut says, is that blue light blocking glasses you are wearing? Well, they are, um, they're Polaroid. So I think they are. Um, they do the job anyway. I'm not sure, you know. 
Uh, I didn't buy them for that purpose, purpose, but I just I bought them just because I like the style. Um, yes, I can see your comments, bro. Um, indeed, I can. Uh, Virens in the house. What's up, brother? Hope you're well. Um, yeah, so that was uh, that was my story from last night. Uh, so yeah, I bounced. I bounced out. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So that was it, and uh, today got up, uh, went and met uh, my my boy Yair in the park, and we did a workout in the fucking sweltering thirty two degrees heat. Um, uh, you know, we did a we did a few cold approach. I only did one cold approach today. I only did one. I only did one cold approach today, and it was a very good one. You know, I didn't. I was just on on the way to the coffee shop after the workout. And uh, it was a good, uh, solid uh, cold approach. She was like nice and curvy, um, yeah, kind of sexy. I, I was at the, it was at a traffic light, so crossroads. So I saw her across the, yeah, I think Yair pointed her out. She was, you, know, you can see across the way. She was about twenty-five meters away, but you just know she was sexy. Uh, she had like, uh, yeah, so. You know the close. You know the lights went green, started like crossing, and I was like, "Holy!" As I got closer to her, she got like sexier and sexier. So I was like, "You know," I looked at Yair and I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go." So I just, uh, you know, just kind of double back. In Japan, you have to like girls aren't gonna stop, especially in the middle of a crossroad. So midway in in between in the crossroads, I kind of just like said, "Hey, what's up? You speak English?" And she was like, "Not really." But you know, kind of receptive. She smiled a little, and uh, you know, I thought I walked with her back, you know, and um, to the other side of the road, and uh, you know, just said, "Hey, what are you up to?" She had a, like a suitcase, like she was like traveling. I was like, "Where are you? Where are you off to?" You, you know, it's just like so many guys just over overthink, overthink, um, you know, cold approach. It's it's really just not. It's just not a complicated thing. You know, it's just like situational ask anything i was saying to like i was saying to yair today it's like so funny that you you can really break the ice with anything you could be, like we were saying today that you could be in a convenience store and ask a girl if there's a hot girl like you know getting a drink or whatever i could go up to a girl and say excuse me could you recommend me some water <laughs> like which water is the best because you know there's a selection of waters it's just it's just completely stupid like icebreaker but that that could be funny she might laugh you know like it's, <laughs> the funny thing is we're saying in japan it's like <laughs> they might actually think you're serious you know um can you recommend me some water like wh which is which water would you recommend to you know st stupid foreigner asking like what kind of water is good but you know that you could actually do that it, like there's no reason you couldn't it's just an icebreaker um anything is fine but yeah she um you know so i exchanged uh, i asked her where she's going she said she's going to hawaii you know i said oh cool uh, let's hang out when you come back and uh, she um you know i just messaged her you know i always say when you get a contact you should always you should message them so so they're at the top of the um of you know you'll you'll have them instead of getting lost they'll be at the top of your message list so I just said, as soon as I got it or said goodbye, I, I messaged her, you know, Hawaii Tanoshinda, ne? That means enjoy your trip to Hawaii. And she messaged me back saying, um, your, your Japanese is really good. Thank you. I'm back to Japan on July 5th, which is obviously a mistake. She probably means August 5th. And then she says, asobo. And asobo means let's play. And that's very, like, I've said before that, when Japanese girls like do a wink, a wink face, um, you know, like they send a wink emoji, that means a lot of time that they're down to fuck, like that they're very interested. They know what that means, that wink face. That wink face has a lot of power, <laughs> a lot of meaning in Japan. But a sobo is another, like, it means let's play, you know. People say it, you know, when they're going drinking or, you know, doing whatever, like hanging out with friends, they say a sobo. I mean, it's funny, but um, yeah, like uh, when it, it also means to like, let's fuck. Like, it also means to have sex, a sobo. 
So, uh, and she obviously Japanese people are very aware of that. So that's kind of like, that's heavy interest. And she also, uh, she also liked, I only have three photos on my hot dude uh, Instagram and she liked all three of them. It's a, you know, like I always say, you never count your chickens before they hatch ever. And I never do because I'm so used to the game. But uh, yeah, it's a, there's a, there's a, I'd say over, there's a strong possibility that something's going to happen with this chick. Um, that's what I'd say about that. Um, but yeah, that's, you know, sometimes you could do 10 cold approaches. Sometimes you only do one and, uh, you know, it works out. Um, you know, if you're not sourcing, you know, you'll never know. You'll never know, you know, it, it, all it takes is one, you know, until you approach, it's better to get rejected and to, you know, to not know, to, uh, to know that you got rejected than to not approach and not know. Uh, that's the way I see it. Um, uh, Rishi in house says, is that shirt you are wearing the same one which you noticed a difference in attraction from women? Uh, yes, it is indeed. I bought a bunch of them. I must have about, uh, you know, have about five of them because <laughs> it's a good fit. Um, yeah, it looks well, simple, cheap. It's all good. Um, you know, you want to be wearing uh, well fitted, well fitted t shirts, uh, you know, to show off your uh, physique. Oh, man. Another thing I noticed today is, um, well, not today. I've known for a while, but I really have to cut down on caffeine, especially as an ectomorph, because, um, you know, when I drink caffeine, it really fucks with my appetite. Well, you know, it's a common side effect, obviously, of, of drinking coffee that it kills your appetite. But for me, it, like drinking caffeine really fucking uh, really like kills it. And I'm, I'm already an ectomorph, so um, I really need to eat as much food as possible. I, I need to eat a lot of food, like just to, you know, because it's almost so it's counterproductive almost if you're doing, if you're doing solid workouts and, and you, but you know, as an ectomorph, if, if I'm not eating enough, it's like, it's almost damaging to your body, like in a way, cause you're like, you don't, you're not, you don't have the fuel to build your body up but you're like putting in all this work, you're all this wear and tear on your body, but you're not like, you don't have the, the ingredients to build yourself up. So yeah, I'm cutting down. Usually I drink like three cups of coffee a day or sometimes even before I, before I work out, I like, I'll have a, I'll slam a Red Bull or something, but, uh, and you know, Red Bull has a ton of caffeine in it and that's terrible. So I worked out today without a uh, without a Red Bull, and that was that was hard. I that was really that was that I was just, you know, but you know, I just it's really important. I've noticed that I really need to I need to eat more food because I'm not getting not get you know I really yeah like I said just the caffeine it just quenches it just quenches my uh, appetite a lot and it's uh, not a good thing. Um. Uh, Viren says, Mac the day gamer, have you done day game in Sapporo? I'm really considering moving there. Um, uh, yeah, I have done day game in Sapporo. I've been to Sapporo three times. I love Sapporo. I like the vibe there. Um, yeah, I like it. Um, a lot of others. I mean, there's hot girls. It's a big city. There's hot girls there, there obviously. Um, Interestingly enough, uh, Sapporo has, I think, the biggest uh, red light district in all of Japan. It's called Suzukino. But um, where are you? Where are you based, Virenz? Where, where are you based? Are you are you in Japan again? I can't remember. Um, Sapporo is a good spot. I like it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you can do day game there, no problem. Um, so yeah. Uh, other than that. Um, let me see what is going on in the world of, let me share a screen. Chrome tab. Yes, so uh, libs of TikTok. Um, yes, so here we have uh, the effect of Black Lives Matter protests on, on the beer bug cases explained. Beer bug cases are increasing, but Black Lives Matter protests may not be to blame. Here's why. 
same publication. The attack on the Capitol may also have been a super spreader event. Lawmakers have been exposed to the beer bug during Wednesday's riot. Yeah, so there's some hypocrisy for you. Um, yeah, it's just funny. <clears throat> Let's see, I saw some video today. I want to find it. Oh, this one. Nice to finally meet your boyfriend, Brad. Thanks, Grandma. Oh, what's with these boring outfits? Let's fix that. Yes, queens. But, uh, who's the top and who's the bottom? Grandma! Whatever. Let's go free Britney. Bitches. It's Britney, baby. Yeah, free Britney! I said it before and I'll say it again. China is going to win. Um, China is going to win, that's for sure. Uh, let's see what this guy has to say. The widespread animosity between Asian people and black people is probably one of the sneakiest tricks ever pulled to uphold white supremacy. I've seen a lot of black people scoff at the idea that the black community should stand in solidarity and support of the Asian community right now. And to justify this, they say, oh, Asian people don't like us, they don't help us, why should we help them? And the answer is quite simple because white people don't want us to. It's the same reason that white people pit black men against black women or light-skinned people against dark-skinned people, because we're a lot easier to control when we're divided. The anti-black and anti-Asian sentiments in our respective communities didn't develop organically, they were put there. They're the product of systems of white supremacy specifically designed to keep people of color disenfranchised in this country. We need to build bridges and stand with the Asian American community and to start dismantling the anti-Asian hatred within ourselves. Because it gets us nowhere, it weakens us both, and there is no question that we would all be stronger together. The widespread animosity between... That guy is, um, has, uh... That guy is just an idiot. <laughs> the scary thing is there's, uh, there's millions like him. There's millions and millions of uh, people like this guy. And that, uh, that's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. And it's, uh, it's not going away anytime soon. I saw another, I saw something else that was kind of crazy. Let me see what it was. Something about uh, something about Australia, where they're thinking about bringing in a social credit uh, score, just like China. China, man, let's just watch it. And by the federal, a radical plan to crack down on social media abuse is being considered by the federal government. For more nines, Ollie Haig joins us live in Adelaide. Ollie, how it work? Well, good morning. Essentially, it will work the same as a passport. Australians forced to submit 100 points of identification, like their driver's license or passport, when using social media accounts like Facebook and Twitter. Now, police would have access to those social media accounts, and it's all part of a crackdown on online abuse. Now, users could be liable for defamation suits or even criminal prosecution, and it's all part of a plan hoping to deter people from engaging in bad behaviour. Now, the recommendation recommendations were handed down by a federal parliamentary inquiry. They're reforms that are being considered by the Morrison government, with the chairman saying there is merit to remove to remove uh, the veil of being anonymous. Layla? That's crazy. Um, you know, when I hear things like that, um, you know, like criminal prosecution and stuff like that, you know, people for opinions, uh, for speaking your mind online or, you know, even if you are abusive and whatnot online, you shouldn't be criminally prosecuted. Uh, that's my opinion. Um, yeah, it just makes me sick to think that you could be, uh, you know, criminally prosecuted for, you know, having, a, having an opinion on social media. Um, it really boils my piss, to be honest. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's like, I don't know where it's going to end. I don't know if it is going to end. Um, uh, Gabriel Ian House says, definitely a Don Lemon fan. I would, uh, yeah, I know, I know that guy. He's a real, uh, he's a real scumbag. 
real piece of fucking shit. Um, Rishi says, victims everywhere. Victims everywhere. Victims, you know, everyone wants to be a victim. I don't know why everyone wants to be a victim. Um, you know, it's just so fucking lame. But, uh, yeah, it's just uh, the only way around it is to become um, as independent as possible. That's what I'm realizing. You know, you got to get, you know, that's why uh, crypto is, is so cool because you can, uh, you know, you can uh, have your, uh, you can have your resources, uh, you have, you, you take charge of your own finances on, online and uh, you're not relying on uh, wanking bankers to uh, control your money where the government can uh, confiscate your, uh, you know, your uh, resources. Um, but uh, yeah, just become as independent as possible and basically do, like, I'm starting to realize, like, whatever the mainstream media says, whatever the mainstream narrative is, just, like, go in the opposite direction. Like, start doing, like, well, you know, they tell you to get the, uh, that, uh, you know, some kind of vaccine, definitely don't get it. Um, you know, just anything, you know, all this thing, don't approach, you know, you're not allowed to approach women in public, yeah, like definitely approach women in public and try and get the numbers, try and try and bang them. Just go in the opposite direction. You're going to be, you're going to do really well. You're going to be happier. You know, just go in the opposite direction of these mainstream fucking wankers. Um, Cause that's what they are. There's pricks. There's wankers or pricks. Um, you know, I'm sick of being tolerant of these people, you know, being, oh, having to be like, you know, beat around the bush and being, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you know, it, it particularly annoys me when someone goes on about, you know, their, uh, you know, people, people go out talking about how they want, they want lockdowns and they want everyone to be, you know, locked up uh, or they, they want mandatory uh, va you know, vaccine passports and all that kind of stuff. And it's like they justify it because they know someone who died or they know someone who got sick. I'm sick of being empathetic to these fuck fuckers, man. It's like, okay, I'm sorry about your, uh, you know, your loved one or whatever who died, but fuck you. Don't try and like take away my freedom, you fucking cunt. Um, it's like, you know, just because like there was a, been a tragedy in your own life, you can't like expect like the whole fucking to lock down the whole fucking society just to like, you know just to give you some kind of comfort just because you're a fucking pussy. And, it, you know, I'm just sick of the whole beating around the bush thing, just being all, like, PC and shit. It's like, get fucked. Like, it's just, I'm just a libertarian. I just, well, I'm just interested in freedom. Um, I'm just over it. Like, I'm over all this, like, oh, but I know my granny. Uh, it's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's just, seriously, I'm serious, though. Like, you know, um... Rishi says, um, Rishi says, it's just white knights and captains who want to interfere in your business when you're trying to holler. Yeah, man, the, the most famous fucking one was in Gillette, where some dude is posted up and he's like, he's about to approach a, like a chick that walks by and then some, you know, um, some dude like jumps out in front of him. Oh, what do you like, you know, oh, you can't do that, bro. What are you doing, bro? You can't harass her. It's like, how is it harassment? Um, you're just saying hello. And that's all you're doing, actually. When you're doing a cold approach, you're basically just saying hello and, and gauging like her interest level. You don't even need any kind of pickup line. You don't even need it to be like like fucking um, you know, to suit the <laughs> situation or whatever. You don't need some some line. You don't need to ask her a question. You can literally just roll up to a chick and say, Hey, what's up? How are you? That's it. Like if she if she likes you, if she thinks you're interesting, you know, um, you know, she'll talk to you, and and you know, you can just you can uh, escalate it from there. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, let me just uh, check something. <clears throat> let's see. Let me. Um, yeah, I want to, so yeah, today I was going to, um, I was going to talk about, um, you know, the idea of, um, getting, getting, uh, you know, if you fall off the wagon, you know, the idea is to get, uh, back 
on the wagon. You know, the importance of getting back on the wagon after you fall off the wagon. Um, uh, David Peter in house says, what's up, Mac? What's up, bro? Welcome to the stream. Um, so, yeah, um, you know, uh, so I don't know if I've talked before about, uh, you know, the fact that um, I, uh, I'm i not a huge, huge fan of uh, alcohol or like I, I tend to stay away from it. And, um, you know, uh, for the most part, I, uh, I have been staying away from staying away from alcohol um and uh you know uh i basically back in around 2014 um back in 2014 around that time i uh i quit uh drinking drinking alcohol uh before i came to japan and i basically I stayed sober for at least, you know, like at least around 2014, 20, yeah, it was at least five years. And I mean, in those five years, I didn't have literally one drink. It was like, I never touched alcohol, like not even a, like a sip of a beer. And, uh, you know, there's, there just came a point, um, there just came a point where uh you know i uh it was it was like one of those like fuck it moments where i was just like out and uh what happened it was like i remember it was like a really cold it was like a winter's day and uh i don't know i, I just wanted to, I, I wanted something to warm me up so i, I just said fuck it I'll, I'll have a like a hot whiskey i didn't want to i remember i didn't want to drink coffee because it was fucking late it was like a night it was night i was out and it was like fucking snowing outside. And, um, you know, I was like, it was just one of those moments where I was like, fuck it. And uh, I had like a, a hot whiskey, like, cause it was, you know, I wanted something to warm me up. And, uh, you know, but the thing, the thing about me is, uh, you know, when I, I'm like, I don't have any addiction to alcohol, but um, when I, whenever I do have a drink, it's definitely um, it. It's never just one drink. <laughs> That's the thing. Um, it's definitely never just one drink. Uh, I when I drink. Sorry, cut out there. Um, yeah, I'm back. So, like I was saying, uh, after I have the first drink, you know, I, something something changes in 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 my mind. Uh, Spark <laughs> Spark fifty five says rugged. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. So um, after you know, after I have the first drink, I I just I just loosen up. I just I just say I say fuck it even more, and. Uh, I tend to just to like start slamming drinks and uh, that's just the way I've always been. And, um, you know, uh, you know, so back there, that's what happened. That's that kind of, you know, and uh, that's happened, you know, a few times, like I'd say more than a few times over the past since about, I think that happened in around, uh, I don't know, 20, I don't know, 2019, you know, happened. I drank a few times in 2019. Um, I drank, uh, I drank a, a, a bunch in, not a bunch, but uh, maybe about uh, six or seven times in, in 2020. And uh, this, this year, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe around five times. But um, yeah, it's just, it's just like, I don't know. Now it's um now I'm at the point where it's like you know, uh, honestly I I really don't have um that that much uh, interest in alcohol anymore just because of the 
how the price I have to pay to drink is just like I, I it's just not in me to drink like sensibly. Like I'm always gonna pay a price for it the next day. Like a like so even now when I drink, it's like even maybe two days. Like because it just the way I drink. Like I said, it's just like fuck, man. It's just hard to you know be drink sensibly for me. It's just like I'm just gonna be slamming and. Uh, yeah, for the past every time I've drank, um, you know, this year it's like fuck it. I, I I'm I'm gonna get back on the wagon, and I do for a while. But now now it's like I I was out on uh, you know Saturday night, and uh, it was again it was one of those like kind of fuck it moments uh, where I was like I was I didn't intend to go. I was out I was out doing a boot camp all day. And I, you know, I must have approached about a hundred chicks, and it was a long day. And then I bumped into a friend who was going to a bar, where it was. It was this kind of. It's this kind of bar where they have a deal where it's like it's like ten bucks in, and uh, you know, you get a you get a wristband, and it's like it's all you can drink. I wasn't really even interested in drink. I was just going there to you know hang out, you know, maybe do you know try and pick up some chicks, but. Um, yeah, so it was just like I don't know. It was just in in the moment I said in the moment I said fuck it, and uh, I uh, you know just started drinking, and it was a it was a long night. It was a long. I was drinking till like seven in the morning, you know. And um, I didn't do do anything. You know, I didn't do anything fucked up or or crazy. But uh, you know, it's just it's just the uh, it's just the to- it's just the hangover. I'm just not about them anymore. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just really not worth it. Actually. It's just never worth it. It's just like, even if you have a good time, like at that night, it's just like, fuck, like the next day is a complete write off. Uh, you know, I can't, you know, the kind of hangovers I have, is like, I can't digest food. Like, it's just like, I don't know what the, the alcohol like strips the, um, the stomach acids from your stomach or whatever, like uh it neutralizes them or whatever and it just you can't i can't keep food down and uh it's just something that um yeah it's just i'm not really i'm not really interested in in dealing with that anymore and i i i'm it's not like it's you know i'm at the point where i don't need alcohol i don't need alcohol at all for a game that's not at all it's just it's just like that uh you know it's just like that fuck it moment where I just, oh, fuck it. Okay, I'll, yeah, I'll have a drink. But it just takes a little bit of self-discipline just to acknowledge when you're saying, like, when you're starting to say fuck it and just kind of, like, reel yourself, you know, stabilize yourself, you know, compose yourself again and say, nah, I'm actually, fuck no, nah, I'm just, you know, I don't need it. I can just have a soft drink and... um you know uh you know just not not pay the same price that you have to pay for for drinking like i'm not i'm not talking financially i'm talking like physically like the price you have to pay is like it's just fuck the next day is just it's just such a write off and like i said now it's like two days two day three days um uh so uh yeah but the thing is, it's like if you know, it's like, do you want? It's it depends on what what you're after. I mean, like I said, I'm not I, I'm not against people drinking, but if you're if you're if it's something that's like affecting your life, or it's something that's like not beneficial to you, it's like you uh, you should consider you know always try and you know uh, get back in the wagon and uh, compose yourself and uh, you know. Um, uh, you know, just remember why you quit in the first place. Um, <clears throat> the East West Connection says, Mac, what do you eat on a daily basis? Um, uh, usually I will get up. It depends on my schedule. It depends, <laughs> depends on my schedule. I mean, I mean, if, uh, if I have to get up early, um, you know, if if I don't have if I have like an uh like if I have like today sometimes I have three meals sometimes I have two meals but I, I would eat a bunch of snacks in between 
and I like coffee, so I, I drink uh, coffee. And that that's also, um, you know, that's also coffee is something that, you know, quen it's kind of quenches my appetite. So it's actually something that, uh, you know, I, as an ectomorph, as a, with an ectomorph body, that's not a good thing. I need to eat as much as possible. So honestly, I need to start eating uh, three meals a day again because I've been eating like two meals a day. Um, these days I'm getting up at like, uh, I'm getting up uh, at around, uh, you know, 11 a.m. And I'll have, I'll have a coffee with some, you know, some, some bread. Uh, some, who knows? It could be, you know, usually it's bread based. Um, sometimes it's like an omelet. I'll cook an omelet, uh, you know, bacon, cheese, omelet. Um, and then, you know, I'll, uh, that'll keep me going until, you know, the mid afternoon where I'll have like, I don't know, a snack and some, some shit. And, uh, or, you know, the afternoon I'll probably, depends on if I'm working out or not, you know, I'll have a, you know, I'll have a workout and then I'll have like a, I'll have a protein shake. My protein shakes are, uh, pretty beastly though. I'll, I'll put like five eggs in them. Um, you know, scoop of protein powder, sometimes two, uh, a banana, uh, some yogurt, milk, um, you know, um, and I need that too. But uh, yeah, that, that I'll have that. And then usually I'll have like a big dinner. Um, you know, I'll uh, honestly, another thing is I eat too much pasta. I need to eat more meat. Um, I eat too much pasta. Like I, I love pa pasta is like shit. Um, but, uh, I love like carbonara. I'll put a bunch of bacon in it. Um, see the thing is I can eat anything I, I without, and it's not going to make me like fat. Um, but, uh, I need to eat like protein, uh, stuff with high, high, a lot of protein in it. Um, so I, honestly, I really, I need to change my, uh, I need to have a better diet. Um, and incorporate more meat into my diet. Um, uh, <clears throat> Viran says, Mac the Day Gamer, maybe, it, maybe start eating more fatty beef, more calories, indeed. Yeah, I, I know that, you know, I'll have um, either for dinner, I'll have, um, you know, steak, steak, you know, if it's not past, past is like the, when I'm lazy, when I, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of the thing I, I probably eat most, but uh, in between that, I'll have like you know either steak, you know some some uh, salmon. Tonight I'm gonna have uh, you know stam salmon steak or fry it up, um, you know uh, with uh, some salad, um, you know and uh, you know that that'll be. It's like two hundred and twenty grams of a salmon steak. Um, but yeah, it's just today I, I acknowledged, I realized, no, well, I'm actually going to, from today, I'm, I'm like, I'm only going to have uh, one coffee a day because I want to, I want to start eating like three meals, um, you know, three healthy, three good meals. I, you know, um, I'm not really too concerned about, you know, I can, I can, I can eat snacks and and uh, junk food and it's not going to really uh it's not going to uh you know i'm not going to put weight on it's not going <laughs> to impact me too negatively whereas some people like you know depending on your body type if you if you eat junk food it's, you're just gonna you're gonna pay for it you're gonna put it on you're gonna put the weight on but uh for me to be honest i need i can i need to eat more um uh, MLD and House says you need to eat egg, uh, eat eggs for breakfast, chicken for lunch, and steak for dinner. Protein shake before bed. Uh, that is some uh, good advice. Um, indeed, I do. Um, yeah. Um, another thing. Another thing about uh, about drinking for me is that uh, it's crazy how fast that I will actually lose weight. So, you know, even one, even one day of not like, you know, cause obviously, um, 
you know, you go out, you drink a lot and, uh, you know, you have a hangover. And like I said, I cannot digest food. I can barely eat because your stom stomach is just like fucking shrank up and it's just, the stomach acids have been neutralized. I don't know. It's just feel nauseous. It's just not, not able to eat. But like one day of that, like I'll lose, I'm not joking. Like it will like, I will lose weight. <laughs> a lot of people will be like, uh, you know, jealous of, of how quickly I can lose weight. Um, you know, and if I if I do that, you know, a few, few weeks in a row, a row, it'll um, completely wreck all the, um, you know, gains I've been making. Um, you know, just uh, it's like a, a tire that's been deflated. So it's just so wasteful. Um, you know, I was uh, I was waking up just you know a few weeks ago. Uh, I was waking up in the morning. You know, seventy seven kgs. I would wake up like after after pissing. I, you know, I'd wake up seventy seven kg. You know, and that was a good weight. You know, I was happy with the progress. I want to get up to I want to get up to eighty kgs. I think that that's you know I'm six foot one. Yeah, you know, I think eighty. 80, 80 kilogram will be a good look for me. It'll be a good weight. But, uh, yeah, just so I drive, you know, two weekends in a row, um, two weekends in a row from drinking, I'm back down to uh, seven. You know, I'm waking up after I piss. I'm like 70, 75.5, like just from two nights drinking. And it sounds crazy because most people would be the opposite. They'd like put on weight. They put on fat, but it's just because of the, you know, the next day, the hangover, not eating. Like, it's just, I lose, I lose weight so quickly. It's, it's crazy. Um, so that's another reason that's, that really, that really just made me realize, fuck this. Like, it's really just such a fucking waste. I just cannot, like, it's just so much more. There's just so many advantages to not drinking. There's so many, um, and there's so many disadvantages to drinking at this point in my life. You know, I'm 32 years old. There's really no benefit to me, uh, you know, drinking anymore. Um, you know, it's just something I want to, I want to, you know, put behind me. I want to get back to the mindset I had back in 2014, um, where uh, you know, I was just like completely. It was easy. It was. It was. I can honestly say. You know, it was a mindset where, you know, abstaining from alcohol was completely easy. Just because I, I acknowledged, you know, I was completely fully aware of all the advantages of, um, of, uh, you know, not not drinking. It was just like, it was, I just always re remembered, like, you know, it's just, you actually have, you know, when you put yourself, when you put yourself, at, in, you know, at a point, in a position where you 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 remember all you know where where it's like drinking is a is just a disadvantage when you just when you acknowledge that being sober is actually an advantage over everyone around you like <laughs> and it's like an advantage in life um and it is like being sober is an advantage in life you have an advantage i mean in, in so many ways um but uh yeah i think i'm 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 almost, I'm back at that point um, where I was at in uh, in 2014. Just because it seriously pissed me off, like not only the hang you know the hangover, but seeing like the gains I'd made go back, you know, lose like a kilogram and a half from two nights drinking. Just that's it, like two nights drinking, I lost a kilogram and a half. That is insane. But um, you know. Uh, you know, just gonna nip nip that in the bud, and um, not not let it you know not continue down that path. And that's that's you know that's the point of today's episode. You know, the importance of not like giving up and just uh, you know not giving up. And and when you make a mistake, no one's perfect. To like reset and get back on the wagon. You know, and refocus, refocus your efforts, refocus your energy, and uh, you know. Just uh, get back on the the righteous path, you know, <laughs> or you know what, whichever path. But uh, you know, just the path of self improvement, the path of uh, you know just bettering yourself. Um, 
and uh, you know I'm not going to do that with uh, with alcohol. Definitely not. Um, you know, um, another stupid thing that I did on Saturday night. I was in, I was in a bar and there was uh, <laughs> there was um, there it, there was like some pole dancers there, and uh, you know I just I want to show off, so I did like I did the flag. You know I can do the flag. But obviously, I didn't warm up or anything, and I like, you know, I'm paying the price for that now because I like I have like a fucked kind of a fucked up shoulder, just from being an idiot and uh, being drunk and uh, you know, just uh, you know, just doing stupid shit when you're drunk. You know, it's fun, but it's also it's not worth it. And uh, yeah, but um, as you saw, I still went working out today. You know. The worst thing you can do is if you get injured is just to stop being active. You know, obviously within reason, if you have an injury, take care of your injury, but at least do something. Um, yeah, just just like waiting for you to recover and, you know, stop working out completely is a, is a bad idea in my opinion because you become lethargic, you get out of your routine. You know, consistency is, is where it's at. Um, you got to be consistent. Uh, you got to show up, you know, got to show up. And uh, that's what I'm trying to do. That is what I'm trying to do. Um, so, yeah, I'm I'm, uh, I'm just here, you know, talking about, you know, the episode, you know, this tonight's show is about getting back on the wagon. And I really sincerely feel like I'm pretty much back on the wagon. Still a degenerate, but... Uh, <laughs> I'm uh, I'm back on the wagon of uh, you know being at least uh, having a you know trying to be physically as healthy as possible, um, because the you know the more physically healthy you are, the more you know uh, you know <laughs> the de de degenerate sex life life you can have, um, you know, and I want to be going I want to be going for as long as possible, you know. I want to be I want to be healthy so that I'm you know I can I can still smash when I'm 60 years old uh you know so you know that is uh you know that's 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 the point I want to put across is um you know if you've fallen off the wagon whether whether it's diet or exercise or or drugs or alcohol you know don't feel bad about it just like refocus you know, and get back on the wagon. Don't just give up and say, "Oh well, you know, I, I, I already, I already started drinking, or I already started smoking pot, or I already started doing, you know, doing whatever kind of drugs or or whatever it is that is your vice." Um, you know, don't let it uh, discourage you from, you know, getting back on the wagon. Don't just give in and say, "Ah, oh, fuck it, I've already." I could, I could say, "Ah, oh, fuck it, I, I, you know, I drank two weekends in a row." Uh, might as well just you know, might as well just continue partying or have you know drinking. But uh, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be like fuck that. You know, I think personally, I think drinking shit. Uh, I don't see the reward in it. I I see it as a disadvantage. I see it as something that just makes me feel like shit. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna you know uh, you know refocus and and remind myself the next time I go out, I'm going to be like you know. I'm in that same situation. I'm in a bar. I mean, like, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna remind myself when I have that fuck it moment where I'm like, ah, just fuck it. I'll just have a drink. Everyone else is doing it. Everyone else is having a good time. I'm gonna do it too. I'm just gonna say no. I'm not. I'm just gonna fucking uh, have a soft drink, you know, and uh, do my thing that I, you know, that I know works for me. That I know is 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 a good um, state of mind for me. You know, and uh, you can you can you can just have a, such a better time. You know, sober sex is the best sex, like w without a doubt. You know, and uh, yeah, drink is like you know it's anti game, it's a distraction, and uh, that's that's my opinion on it. Um, no shade on anyone who likes to drink. It's it's a personal choice. But if it's something that is, uh, you know, you're not happy with, you know, you just gotta find, you just gotta find the, the, um, the advantages 
of of being sober and that will really really help you uh, abstain that will really that that is you know if you see something as a disadvantage you're not going to want to do it you know you're really not and that's what made it like i said earlier that's what made it so easy it was like a breeze it was a walk anytime anytime anyone tried to uh you know say oh you know just have a drink just do it you know what do you you just have one you know just relax it's just like no it was, it was easy because i remind, reminded myself yeah no it's it's actually no it's the disadvantage it's not but it's not good it's gonna be i'm gonna pay the price for it tomorrow it's gonna suck it's gonna be a long you know just gonna be a shitty day I'm not gonna be able to eat properly it's gonna yeah it's gonna be a bad vibe so um yeah that's what i'm gonna do going forward and that's the way that's that's the advice I'd give someone if they were like, "Fuck, I don't, I, I don't." If someone asked me, like, "Why, you know, how, how can I give up alcohol? How can I, how can I stop?" I would say, "Yeah, that's what you do. You, 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 you remember that any time that you are in a situation where people are offering you alcohol, or you're, there's alcohol around you, or you're at a party, you just remind yourself that it's an advantage to be sober." That's it. You just remind remind yourself of, of the advantage of being sober, and it should be easy. It should be easy. It's easier to get pussy. You know, you're at a party. I'm not saying don't go to parties. Go to parties. Like go out, have a good time. We can do it sober. You know, and just you can just think of it as being an advantage. Think about it as being easier to get laid, easier to have a good time. Plus, you can enjoy the next day. Plus, you can do anything you want the next day. You can stay out. Even you can even stay out really late, and you can you can stay out late gaming, doing whatever. Plus, the next day you can you know you sleep in a bit. You wake up fresh as a fucking daisy. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean. But you do not wake up fresh as a daisy um, uh, when when you spend all night drinking. You do not. You it's literally the opposite. <laughs> You're not fresh at all. You're absolutely in bits, and the older you get, the more fucked up it becomes. Um, El Ta says, having a good quality drink with a nice meal is a pleasure, but social drinking with rubbish alcohol for the sake of it is just damaging. Yeah, like I said, I mean, honestly, I'm not here to you know tell people to uh, you know quit alcohol or give it up or you know if that's what you like to do, it's it's like it's a personal choice. It's like, is it damaging to your life? Is it bad for you? Are, is it causing you issues? You know, and from, you know, if it is, then, you know, you might need to reconsider. But if it's like, like you said, having a quality drink with a nice meal, um, that's fine. But for me, that doesn't work because as I explained earlier, I don't have, you know, it's for me, it's difficult just to have one drink because for something, something clicks in my brain where it's like, I say fuck it even more and I just consume more alcohol. Um, but yeah, you know, it's uh, everyone's different. Everyone needs to, uh, you know, decide what's best for themselves. Um, and I'm just here telling my side, telling my story. And, uh, you know, it's also good, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm putting it out there, you know, for, you know, maybe inspire other people. But uh, it's also good for me because I'm, you know, maybe being held accountable. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, like I said, it's, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a huge, it's not an, like I said, I don't, I don't consider myself being an alcoholic at all. I don't have any, I don't get thirst, thirst for, uh, for alcohol, but you know, like I said, it's once I have the one, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's game over. Um, uh, know your word. What's up, brother? Hope you're well. Um, Justin S says something in your Irish blood must be man I don't know it must be who knows um, yeah we do have that culture we I, we had that culture of, you know even when you know I start, I think I started drinking when I was 15 and there, there was a you know the culture with my teenage you know a teenager and with our friends and we would always have the culture of like you know, saying let's get as fucked up as possible. Let's all like, let's drink till we're sick. It was nuts. It was, I mean, it was completely nuts. But it was, it was fun. But I mean, it, it was also bad. Like in in reality, it's it's not a good way to be. 
you know, when you're a teenager drinking until you're sick. But we were just crazy. I don't know. Um, let's you know, we would say stuff like, "Tonight I'm just gonna fucking, I'm gonna drink until I'm puking," and we would like we would actually drink until we were like so fucked up we were like passed out and puking. It was ridiculous. But um, yeah, I'm not about that life. Not about that anymore, man. Not about that life. It's just not worth it. Um, it really is like entering a hellscape. Like when you when you have a really bad hangover, like a really disgustingly vicious hangover, it's literally like being in hell. Like if it's like you know you 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 just poison your body. Like you uh, you know. You've literally poisoned your body. Like you, your body's recovering. Your body is in a state of recovery because it's been so. It's been temporarily like damaged. You know, it's just uh, so. Yeah, um, I I'd rather spend more of my life in pleasure, in like you know, in health, in a healthy state of pleasure. I think most people would, and that's you know that's the re It's not like you know. It's all oh, you're, you're abstaining from alcohol. You're missing out on pleasure. No, no, no. It's like I want to be in a healthy state of pleasure all the time. So that's why I I uh, I abstain from alcohol. And there might be some short term pleasure, like a couple of hours, but the the price you're paying is like longer. Like a hangover can last like, like twelve hours, like longer. You can be sometimes you know can even make you sick. You know for a few days. Or even alcohol, you know, it's in winter. It can particularly it can bring on, it can bring on a flu or you know make you make you sick for a week or whatever. Just you know, just because you weaken your immune system and whatnot, you know, from being out. You know, um, but yeah, um, hopefully this uh, you know uh, show has uh, maybe inspired some of you to get back on the wagon and you know readjust yourself. You reposition re yourself, whether, you know, it might not be alcohol, it could be diet, it could be anything, you know, it could be whatever it is that you want to, like, you know, refocus yourself about, you know, just, uh, you know, just because you, you uh, make mistakes, just because you fall off the wagon, don't let it discourage you. Get the fuck back on the wagon, refocus yourself and get back on your mission. And, uh, yeah, it, it's definitely going to be uh, worth it. But um, yeah, guys, I'm gonna cut it there. I'm gonna go out and uh, smash uh, one of my Chinese chicks. So uh, it's gonna be, uh, yeah, that's it. So uh, as usual, like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the links in the description. Um, you know, if you want to send a donation or if you want to sign up to my premium content, where uh, you know I talk about uh, thing, you know, I share much more degenerate stories. Um, all that kind of good stuff and uh, you know in fields recordings all that uh, do so it will uh, definitely improve your game I'm out here actually living the player lifestyle for sure uh, so uh, I will be back on uh, Thursday night 9 p.m. central time that will be uh, Friday morning uh, 11 a.m. Japanese time so uh, yeah guys peace out have a good one bye bye